want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the cards, the drugs from my generation. I'll take the fall, the saints, and the cross the nation. Yeah. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 12th of August 1996. WWF Raw and WCW Nitro are going head to head tonight and we're going to check out both episodes to see which was the best. Nitro is live from Casper, Wyoming which Larry Zbysko called the middle of nowhere and Raw is still showing taped matches from Seattle. Before we get started let's take a look at the Hog Wild 1996 results and the first hour of Monday Nitro. WCW Hog Wild took place in Sturgis, South Dakota on August 10th, 1996. The event took place on a Saturday. Rey Mysterio defeated the Ultimate Dragon or Ultimo Dragon in the first match of the pay-per-view and while Rey's match against Psychosis at Bash at the Beach was better, this one was still fun to watch. It's crazy to think that Rey Mysterio was just 21 years old when he made his WCW debut and he's having some of the most exciting matches on the cards. A big powerhouse match was up next when Ice Train took on Scott Norton, Fire and Ice explode in Sturgis brother, but the match just wasn't that good and you kinda expect more. Scott Norton picks up the win. Bill Nakano vs Medusa was next, the loser would have their motorbike smashed up by the winner, but the ending was quite weird. Nakano hits a side suplex and Medusa kicks out. But the match is somehow over and Medusa gets the win. It's explained that Nakano's shoulders were counted to the mat but it took so long for the bell to ring that you just totally forgot what happened. It was messy and Medusa does her best at messing up Nakano's motorcycle. Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko then had a great 25 minute bout and it's just a shame that this crowd refused to get into the match. Goes to show that the best time to put on wrestling events is in front of, you know, wrestling fans. Benoit got the win thanks to woman distracting Malenko. Harlem Heat then defended their tag team titles against the Steiner brothers and the motorcycle goons at Hog Wild did their best to make Booker T and Stevie Ray feel out of place. Sherry and Robert Parker interfered in the match and they used powder to varying degrees of success but Harlem Heat got the win in the end, the crowd booed the match outcome. Ric Flair pinned Eddie Guerrero next when Slick Rick applied the figure 4 leg lock with some help from Woman. This was one of the better matches of the card. The Outsiders defeated Lex Luger and Sting when referee Nick Patrick turned heel. Not a bad match but nothing great either. The NWO having their own slimy referee was a great idea though I wish it was anyone else but Nick Patrick. Hollywood Hulk Hogan then defeated the Giant to become the new WCW champion and this match was pretty poor. It's a 15 minute matchup and it's shocking how slow it gets in places. Still, the intrigue of a heel Hulk Hogan is what's on sale here and the booty man trying to suck up to Hulk Hogan afterwards only to get a kicking makes it worthwhile in my opinion. It's a terrible waste of a birthday cake though. The Outsiders and Hulk Hogan make good on their promise and the WCW belt gets christened as the NWO Championship as the show comes to an end. The setting for Hogwild is unique but that doesn't mean it's good. I'm not sure wrestling fans cared about motorbikes or leather clad biker dudes but still the Flair match, the Malenko match and Harlem Heat's match are worth your time. The rest ranged from okay to bad. Larry Zbysko is pissed off with the WCW locker room, in particular Sting and Lex Luger and that's because nobody came out to save the WCW heavyweight title from getting defaced by Hall, Nash and Hogan at Hog Wild. We see some screenshots from the pay-per-view before going to our first match. It's an 8-man tag featuring the Dungeon of Doom taking on High Voltage and Rough and Ready. Ming gets the win for the dungeon and after the match Rough and Ready beat up their own teammates. 
Sting and Lex Luger then show up, saying that there may have been controversy last night in Sturgis, but the Stinger and the Total Package want to clear up any controversy right now, and a challenge is laid out for the New World Order. Sting and Luger get in the ring and they call out the NWO, but neither Hall Nash nor Hogan appear. Diamond Dallas Page put the Renegade away next with a diamond cutter. It may not have been the best matchup, but it's still pretty interesting seeing Dallas continue to get his push. It wouldn't be long before the Outsiders began taking notice. Speaking of the Outsiders, Hall, Nash and Hogan are backstage in their gear, and they aren't too happy about Luger and Sting calling them out. The NWO work on their own time and they don't answer to nobody. Scott Hall announces that the Outsiders will face Sting and Luger later tonight, so yeah, we're going to see the in-ring Nitro debut of Hall and Nash tonight in our main event. Hogan finds it funny that nobody has found out who the 4th and 5th members are of the New World Order, saying that nobody has been able to piece together the clues that they have left behind. Scott Hall then says that he'd like some birthday cake and he wants the booty man to bring it in. I'm actually surprised that he didn't walk into the locker room holding the destroyed cake, getting on his hands and knees and bestowing delicious cake on the New World Order. Conan vs Jim Powers was next and to be fair, the crowd got pretty into this one. Conan cheated by using the ropes for leverage, scoring a pinfall win in the process. Mean Gene wants to know why Conan has decided to start cheating to gain victories, and Conan somehow swings it around by saying that this is all part of his plan to help WCW take out the NWO. Seeing Rey Mysterio getting thrown around by Kevin Nash kinda lit a fire in Conan, and for for some reason, this makes him cheat to win matches, I don't know. The WCW Yeti shows up but he's now known as Big Ron Studd. Ron Studd is going to take on Chris Benoit and the size difference is incredible. Benoit gets the win with a superplex and afterwards Mean Gene gets a word with Chris Benoit. Chris says the horsemen have an agenda and the horsemen won't quit until that agenda is met. And then Benoit confirms that he's going to face the giant this week at Clash of the Champions. That's right, we have a Clash of the Champions to cover next week and there's been absolutely no hype and no build up for the show at all and it's really because WCW was busy with Hog Wild. Nitro wins the unopposed point this week. Their first 60 minutes was pretty varied but the prospect of Hall and Nash wrestling tonight on Nitro would have been enough to keep me from changing the channel. WCW presents Harlem Heat vs Rick and Scott Steiner, while the World Wrestling Federation give us the in-ring debut of Farouk Assad. Farouk takes on Skip of the Body Donnas. It's announced at the start of Raw that Ahmed Johnson is injured and he's gonna be on the shelf for a little while. Farouk's attack a few weeks ago had caused a ruptured kidney and it was further aggravated during and after the Battle Royal. We're gonna get more updates later in the show. Mega Man starts things off with a back elbow that floors Skip. Big right hands from Farouk find their mark and Skip gets tossed over the top rope. There's nothing fancy about Farouk's offense here and I like it. It's just incredible that he has a no nonsense wrestling style but an all nonsense wrestling attire. On the outside of the ring Farouk continues to destroy Skip with those big right hands. A clothesline right in front of Sonny gets delivered and back inside the ropes Skip tries to fight back but it's no use. The body Donna takes a fall away slam that looks seriously impressive. Farouk and Sonny taunt Skip before a body slam gets delivered, followed up with a falling headbutt. It's then announced that Gorilla Monsoon made Jerry Lawler vs Jake Roberts an official matchup for SummerSlam. The King can't wait to get his hands on Jake and Jerry says that he's gonna embarrass his opponent this week on pay per view. Vince McMahon also says that Farouk could get crowned the new Intercontinental Champion at SummerSlam. It's all up to Gorilla Monsoon and nobody knows what's gonna happen with the IC title but one thing is for sure, Ahmed Johnson has to vacate the belt. 
A big power slam from Farouk again looks very impressive, so impressive that he hits another one, and Skip then falls victim to the Dominator, a move that gets a loud gasp from the audience when it's pulled off. Farouk wins in his WWF Raw debut and he looked absolutely unstoppable from bell to bell. Skip may have got nothing in here but it was still a good call, a great introduction to Ron Simmons for WWF audiences. I just can't get over his ring gear. The Steiners vs Harlem Heat is the first of three Hogwild rematches we're gonna see tonight on Nitro. Rick and Scott want a little payback for Hogwild and Harlem Heat take a beating at the opening bell. Booker T and Stevie Ray recuperate on the outside before our match begins with Scott Steiner and Booker T inside the ropes. Scott takes control right away and Booker takes a power slam. Scott keeps his momentum with an overhead belly to belly suplex before also taking out Stevie Ray. Harlem Heat once again go to the outside to rethink their strategy. It looks like Stevie Ray is going to have better luck than Booker T, but Rick Steiner puts an end to Stevie's flurry with a back body drop. Scotty then comes back in just before we go to commercial break, and when we come back, we have Rick Steiner and Booker T. Rick counters a suplex with a suplex of his own. Booker runs out of the ring and Rick gives chase, and this allows Stevie Ray to intercept the dog faced gremlin, and Rick takes a beating. It's ineffective, though Rick catches Booker T out of a leapfrog attempt, and Booker gets slammed to the mat. This gets a great reaction from the audience too. Scott comes back in and a few clotheslines get delivered. Scott then hits a double underhook powerbomb on Booker T, but Stevie breaks up the count. And then, <laughs> we get the match finish. While Rick and Stevie fight on the outside, Sherry holds Scott's foot when Scott goes for a suplex. This results in Booker falling on top of Scott for a pin attempt. Colonel Robert Parker then stumbles into the ring and he falls over Booker, resulting in Harlem Heat getting disqualified. The ending seriously hurt this match and it's been the same thing for weeks now. Sherry and Parker's relationship continues to cause problems for Booker T and Stevie Ray. I'm giving the first point to WWF Raw, Farouk had a strong debut whereas the Nitro tag team match felt like a replay. Rey Mysterio vs Ultimo Dragon is up next on Nitro while the WWF presents Savio Vega taking on Crush. Crush was the guy that Clarence Mason was trying to get rehired during those meetings with Gorilla Monsoon, and this was Crush's first match in the WWF since the 1995 Royal Rumble. Brian Adams did indeed get arrested back in 1995 when narcotics officers found gear in his home along with unregistered guns, but he posted bail shortly afterwards. Still, this was enough for Vince McMahon to release him from his contract, but here he is back on Raw and back with this new gimmick, a gimmick inspired by his extremely short time in jail because, you know, this is how everyone dresses once they get released from prison. Crush overpowers Savio to start things off. Clarence Mason is on commentary where he explains that his client was indeed arrested, but he was never convicted. Savio Vega begins fighting back, but Crush pushes his opponent to the mat. Savio takes a beating on the floor, and Crush begins completely dominating the matchup, snapping Savio's neck on the top rope. Crush delivers a few shots while Savio's head is draped over the apron, and Vega ends up getting his shoulder rammed into the ring post. And back inside the ring, Crush kicks his opponent before delivering a delayed body slam. It's extremely slow work here, and there's absolutely nothing to get excited about. Even Crush looks bored when he sits on the top rope here. Crush misses a fist drop, and Savio manages to follow up with a kind of face crusher that looked pretty weak. Savio tries to build momentum, but Crush comes back with a kick to the midsection, followed by a leg drop. The audience just couldn't care less, and they have all gone on completely silent. How do you get the crowd back into the match? With a good old submission move of course. A neck wrench from Crush surprisingly doesn't make Savio tap out. We go to commercial break and when we come back Savio is in a camel clutch and I'm already just ready for this match to end. It's insane how they could do such a good job with Farouk's debut match, but the reintroduction of Crush has fallen completely flat. 
Clarence Mason fights off Vince McMahon's accusations of having a conflict of interest with members of Camp Cornet as Savio Vega fights back but Crush puts him right back down with a big boot. Savio replies with a spinning sidekick but his follow up spinning wheel kick fails to connect. Crush then eventually applies a full Nelson and our match is over. Crush wins via submission and my god that was so hard to sit through. Crush isn't a bad wrestler at all but it can't be denied this was one of the most underwhelming returns in WWF history. The slow and plodding WWF match gets countered by a fast paced cruiserweight encounter between Rey Mysterio and Ultimo Dragon, still being billed here as Ultimate Dragon. Dragon throws a few kicks to intimidate Mysterio, Mysterio dodges the opening attack but he doesn't dodge Dragon's follow up kick combo. It's shocking that this match is already better than Crush vs Savio and we're mere seconds into the bout. Ray takes a spinning rack backbreaker before Dragon summons the Great Muda for a cartwheel back elbow in the corner and Ray then falls victim to a ridiculously high impact running powerbomb. Ray gets his feet up when Ultimo Dragon jumps off the top rope but it looks like Mysterio got himself tied up a little when trying to jump over the ropes. Still, Ray's springboard head scissors lands perfectly and Ultimo Dragon takes a flipping senton on the outside. The audience applauds both men's efforts here. Back inside the ring, Dragon counters a top rope move with a drop kick, and when Ray falls to the outside, Dragon feigns a 619 before kicking Mysterio and landing a suicide dive. Back inside the ropes, Ultimo Dragon reverses a backdrop with a tiger suplex that only scores him a two count. A follow up moonsault again only scores two, and Dragon then hits a lion salt that floors Rey Mysterio. Ultimo Dragon signals for the end and he goes for a power bomb, but Rey counters and Dragon gets pinned. One, two, three. This bout was pretty much all Ultimo Dragon and it was a little short, but I've no complaints, even after watching these two wrestle at Hogwild also. Leagues better than Savio vs Crush, it's an easy point for WCW Nitro. Ric Flair vs The Macho Man Randy Savage next on Nitro, <laughs> and we have The Godwins vs Who and TL Hopper on Raw. <sighs> Before the Raw match we get a short interview with Ahmed Johnson conducted by Kevin Kelly. Ahmed says that he noticed something was wrong when he went back to his hotel room and his stomach began feeling cold. Johnson says his kidneys got ruptured after a kick from Farouk and the battle royal just made it worse but all the mental pain he's going through right now is worse than the physical pain even though doctors said that his condition could be very very serious. Ahmed did legitimately have kidney problems and regardless of what you may think of his wrestling abilities and I know I've gave Ahmed a hard time here too, but it must have been a real blow to Ahmed losing the IC title during what would turn out to be his biggest push ever in the World Wrestling Federation. Ahmed would return later in the year but he wouldn't win another championship belt and the remainder of his career would be filled with even more injury problems. Back in the arena we have dirty white boy TL Hopper tagging up with Who to take on Phineas and Henry Godwin. No need to go through the Who jokes because Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler have that all taken care of. This was simply a burial of poor Jim Nethart and another shining example of why WCW were kicking the WWF's asses on a weekly basis. Bob Backlund is going to provide commentary because this match needs all the help it can get and we start off with Henry Godwin applying a side headlock to Jim Nethart. I'm not calling him who because it sounds fucking stupid. Henry lands a hip toss before quickly tagging in Phineas. Phineas and Ned Hart trade wrist locks before Hopper gets tagged in. Hopper again goes for the wrist but Phineas replies with a huge body slam that makes the ring shake. Phineas lands some strikes as Bob Backlund talks about how Shawn Michaels is corrupting the youth of America with his gyrating and dance moves. Ned Hart and Hopper land a double backdrop as Jim comes back into the match 
and Phineas gets drilled into the corner as Backlund begins completely losing his mind on commentary. He's talking about schools not teaching kids about contraceptives and how people should be applying condominiums to stop the spread of diseases. McMahon and Lawler are lost for words. What, McMahon? So let me get this straight. Backlund leaves the commentary table after his outburst and Jerry Lawler says he used to live in a condominium. The match continues but Backlund returns and just look at Vince McMahon's face here. He's like, what's he doing? What is he doing? Leave, go, move, get the fuck out of my face. Hopper and Phineas are now in the ring and Phineas counters a suplex and then, fuck's sake, can we watch the match please? Gorilla Monsoon appears to say the IC title has been vacated, news that Vince McMahon already told us during the Farouk match. The match finish happens during the split screen, Henry lands a slop drop to score the win and Monsoon announces that a tournament will begin next week to crown a new intercontinental champion. I'm not so sure if all these distractions were a good thing or a bad thing, but either way, it was another poor segment from the WWF. Unintentionally funny, but still poor. Flair vs Macho on Nitro, a match we have seen plenty of times but the competition is so weak that Flair and Savage could practically get away with murder here. Savage storms to the ring but Slick Rick hits a knife edge chop, Rick does a little styling and profiling before Savage comes back with some intense offence, bringing Flair down to the mat in the process. Savage gets Flair in the corner and the two men trade blows. Savage then sends Flair into the opposite corner and Flair takes a backdrop. The referee tries to stop Savage from killing Flair in the corner and when both men get to their feet, Savage spits on his opponent. Flair gets in the Roman Greco thumb to the eye and the nature boy can't believe it when Savage bounces back up after another hard knife edge chop. Flair takes a flurry of right hands from the Macho Man that eventually result in the match spilling to the outside and Rick is able to slow Savage down with a low blow beside the guardrail. The competitors get back in the ring as we go to commercial break and when we come back, Liz slaps Savage across the face. Savage tries to dive at his ex-wife but Elizabeth gets out of harm's way. Flair tries to go toe to toe once again with Savage in the corner but Macho gets the best of Slick Rick. We see another back body drop and Savage hits a double axe handle from the top rope. Flair manages to counter Savage on the second attempt and Rick then begins attacking the leg. Savage gets dumped out of the ring and Woman gets in a cheap shot before Randy crawls back inside the ropes. Flair again goes after the leg, Savage takes a knee breaker and then we see the figure 4. The Macho Man eventually manages to reverse the pressure but the damage has been done. Flair hits a side suplex but Savage kicks out at 2. The Macho Man begins fighting back and Flair makes the mistake of going to the top rope. Flair takes the bump and Savage really has the fans in his corner. Flair goes up and over the opposite turnbuckle and then Slick Rick manages to knock out the referee with a clothesline. The fight spills to the outside again, Savage pulls up the protective mats and then Hulk Hogan shows up to deliver some of those signature shitty chair shots that he's so well known for. Hogan could do a lot of things, some good, some bad, but I've no idea why he couldn't throw a decent chair shot. Savage is out cold, the commentators bring up how Hogan didn't touch Ric Flair during this whole attack and the Nature Boy is able to score a pinfall win over Randy Savage live on Monday Nitro. Heenan and Bischoff are confused. They plant some seeds here in regards to Ric Flair possibly being involved with the new world order. Nitro gets the point. Bret Hart gives us an update on his career status next and we also have a promo from Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Let's stick with Nitro then, we see some clips from Hog Wild and we see the WCW title getting spray painted. This dastardly act has been the focus of tonight's episode of Nitro. We also see Brother Brudai getting beat up once again and yes I'm seriously underselling how delighted this makes me. The booty man took two humiliating beatings over the course of one week and yes it has been absolutely glorious. 
Hogan comes out for an interview with Mean Gene Okerlund and Hogan announces that the WCW belt is now known as the NWO belt. Nothing is going to stop the New World Order from taking over World Championship Wrestling. Mean Gene announces that Hogan will defend the belt later this week at Clash of the Champions against Ric Flair and Gene wants to know why Flair wasn't attacked moments ago and Hogan says because of how well revered Ric Flair is he wanted the Nature Boy at 100% this week at the Clash and when Hogan defeats Flair in the middle of the ring then there wouldn't be any excuses. Gene asks Hogan about the Outsiders vs Sting and Luger later tonight on Nitro and Hogan totally loses his train of thought going back to Ric Flair and talking about placing WCW wrestlers in certain categories and how Flair is in the quote stupid little man category. It was all going so well but then Hogan just began blobbering about absolutely nothing so it's a swing and a miss from Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The hitman Bret Hart is on the wrestle vessel trying to chill out but these little assholes here keep asking him when are you coming back to the WWF? Mr Perfect asks the hard hitting questions and Bret won't give a definite answer. Bret says flat out that people will just have to live with his decision if he doesn't want to come back to the World Wrestling Federation. The hitman has had a great time being at home with his family and the only reason why he would come back is for the fans. He wouldn't come back to try to prove anything. Brett says he talked to a lot of his supporters on the cruise and they all want him to make his big return but Brett wants to take a little more time to think things over. One way or the other the hitman says he wants a chance to speak his mind in the middle of the ring and he will address the fans publicly if he does indeed decide to leave the World Wrestling Federation. And the promo ends with Bret Hart saying if I come back I'm gonna have a shovel. <laughs> no joking, have a listen. And if I come back, well I'm gonna have a shovel. Bret Hart's pink and black shovel. Honestly, both Hogan and Bret said a lot of nothing here but it's still two very intriguing superstars getting some airtime. Hogan with his evil NWO persona and Bret teasing an upcoming return or an upcoming retirement. Can't really decide which was better or which was worse though, so here have a point each. Main event time, the Slammy award winning Owen Hart takes on Shawn Michaels on Raw while the Outsiders take on Sting and Lex Luger. There seems to be some chaos in the truck but Bischoff says we're still going to see the tag team main event. The Outsiders appear from the crowd and then Lex Luger makes his entrance but there's no Sting. The match is going to kick off with Luger all on his own but the total package does a good job of taking care of both Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Sting then appears from the audience and he hits a top rope clothesline on Big Sexy. Sting and Luger clean house and the outsiders take a moment to regroup. Hall and Nash try to attack their opponents from opposite sides of the ring but it's no use. Luger takes care of Scott Hall while Sting hits a plancha on Nash. Scott Hall makes the save for his tag team partner and all four men eventually get back in the ring and there's absolutely no control here. Sting takes a big boot before getting thrown over the top rope but Nick Patrick doesn't call for a DQ, something that makes Eric Bischoff very suspicious. The Stinger comes back in with a double clothesline and Scott Hall takes a face crusher. Bobby Heenan wonders why there aren't any tags here and why is Nick Patrick not trying to get a little order in this matchup. Sting gets the outsiders in perfect position for a few Stinger splashes but he misses when going for Scott Hall. Just then the horsemen run into the ring and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash leave. Our match is over. Nick Patrick left the ring too and Bischoff tries to explain that the horsemen ran down because of the bad officiating during the bout. Heenan says to take a good look at this, the four horsemen have actually came out to help Sting and Lex Luger. And then we see a replay that clearly shows Nick Patrick helping Scott Hall when Sting went for the Stinger splash. Mean Gene interviews Ric Flair afterwards and Flair says he doesn't like Sting and Luger but he will play ball with his old enemies because they represent WCW. Flair says that Mongo will take care of Nash, Double A could destroy Scott Hall and whoever the 4th and 5th man is Chris Benoit will take both of them out. 
At Clash of the Champions, Flair and Hogan are gone in style and profile, and Nitro comes to an end with Mean Gene promoting the Clash special this week on TBS. Not much of a wrestling match to end Nitro, but still very exciting stuff. The NWO are still being positioned as a real threat to WCW, even after gaining the World Heavyweight title. Owen vs Sean's gonna be hard to beat, this is the second time these two have stepped into the ring on reliving the war, but I'm still really looking forward to it. Vader is backstage tonight so you kinda expect a beatdown to end this episode of Raw but let's see what happens. Owen goes for the wrist but Sean counters, Owen then reverses and Sean gets his head slammed on the mat, Sean does a kip up, Owen shows he can do whatever HBK can do, and Owen hard slaps Sean across the face. Owen cowers away in the corner and he gets a cheap shot in, Michaels comes back with a leg sweep but Owen manages to throw HBK to the outside, Sean holds onto the ropes and he skins the cat, Owen walks into a head scissors and Sean follows up with a plancha, the crowd finally makes some noise tonight on Monday Night Raw. Owen flips over HBK but he misses his follow up spinning wheel kick, Michaels lands a crossbody before bringing Owen down to the mat with a headlock takedown, everything is just so on point with these two. We get a replay from last year showing us Owen concussing HBK with an enziguri, feels like a lifetime ago doesn't it? And Jerry Lawler says that this is the move that will get Owen the victory tonight on Raw. A hip toss and an arm drag results in Owen getting locked in an arm bar, Owen gets out with a scoop slam but Sean comes right back with another arm drag followed by another arm bar. Owen gets out by bringing Sean to the corner where the referee orders a break, Owen again gets in a cheap shot but Sean answers with a hard Irish whip to the corner followed by a clothesline, the impact here was absolutely insane. Owen doesn't stay down for long, a belly to belly suplex from the king of hearts slows Sean down and Owen hits a backbreaker as we go to commercial break. We come back and Owen brings it to the mat, Sean tries to fight out but Owen hits that spinning wheel kick only getting a two count. Another replay gets broadcasted, this time it's Sean taking a Vader bomb at international incident. HBK fights out of Owen's submission hold, HBK manages to pin Owen but Owen kicks out and he hits a big jumping clothesline. A top rope drop kick gets delivered as Raw takes its final commercial break and when we come back Owen Hart is warming up the band. Owen misses the enziguri and Sean replies with a jumping forearm, Owen then takes a power slam and HBK hits his elbow drop. Michaels begins warming up the band but Vader appears on the apron, Michaels hits a drop kick on Vader, Owen gets kicked in the chest and then Owen takes the full sweet chin music, Sean wins via pinfall. Vader goes to the outside and he grabs a steel chair, Sean takes Owen's cast but while all this was going on Jim Cornette passed his tennis racket to Owen Hart, Owen goes to attack Sean but HBK takes control of the racket. Owen gets hit but Vader comes in to destroy his SummerSlam opponent this week. Raw ends with Shawn Michaels taking an absolute beating from the man they call Vader, HBK takes two Vader bombs and there's nothing the referees nor the officials can do about it. Vader goes upstairs for a Vader salt but Raw ends just before we see the move. I'm giving the final point to Monday Night Raw this week, Owen vs Sean was a good match and plenty of time was afforded for the Raw main event, Night Raw was good also but I just felt Raw was better. Nitro wins this week's Reliving the War but Raw was pretty close, I enjoyed the Farouk debut and the main event match was good too but the return of Crush and the tag team bout were pretty hard to sit through. Ultimo Dragon vs Rey Mysterio and the Flair vs Savage matches on Nitro are worth watching but admittedly WCW Nitro was stuck in between the fallout of Hogwild and building up another big show taking place just a few days later. Our overall scores are 15 points to Raw, 24 points to Nitro and we've had 6 ties. In the television ratings Nitro got a 3.3 while Raw scored a 2, the second worst WWF rating since the beginning of the Monday Night War.
If you thought this episode was long, then wait until next week when we go over the Clash of the Champions results and the SummerSlam results. If you enjoy this series and if you want to help me out a little, please do me a massive favour and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you won't miss any episodes going forward. I hope to see you all next week. Thank you very much for watching and take care.